Hey guys, it's Sakar, and today I'm going to be showing you my PvP build for my Mag Necro for the Blackwood chapter. Before we get started, I have a few announcements. First, I would like to say thank you to everybody who comes over on the Twitch page. We just hit partner on Twitch, so that is probably one of the biggest goals that I'm ever going to have in the next few years. I was beyond ecstatic, and it is actually just insane that we got this far, and I am so happy with it. Next thing I want to do is I want to try and go for YouTube partner and the best way for you guys to help me with that is if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I got to get up my subs a little bit and just having each one counts and I really, really, really do appreciate you guys. So please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you are. But without any further ado, let's get started. First things first, our gear, we're going to basically be running five mechanical acuity on our front bar. Uh, five pariah and two balorg so it's going to look like this our lightning staff on our front bar is going to be in the sharpen trait with the weapon and spell damage glyph this is going to increase your damage as much as possible your pen is going to get increased with the sharpen and that's basically what you want on magic builds in my opinion and lightning staff is going to buff your aoe damage so with stuff like your grave robber synergy the dawn breaker that we're going to use and blast bones they're all going to be buffed by lightning staff so that's why we use that on our back bar we're just going to have two piece potentates to get that reduced damage from players by three percent we're gonna have the sword empowered just to get your healing up and our shield in sturdy with a stamina enchant and that's basically gonna make you a little bit more tanky and because you're gonna be staying on your back bar a lot which is why i have sturdy because you're gonna be blocking a lot and then three that three percent reduced damage from players is kind of nice when you're just kiting and just uh waiting to hit that group properly our helmet is going to be a heavy balorg's helmet in the impenetrable trait all of our glyphs are going to be prismatic as always and basically everything is going to be in pen as well our chest piece is going to be a heavy pariah in reinforced though our only re reinforced piece is this chest piece everything else is going to be in pen medium balorg shoulders in pen light mechanical acuity waist in in pen light mechanical acuity hands in in pen as well and then heavy pariah in impen legs. Then light uh, shoes of mechanical acuity also in impen. This is going to give you three, three, one, three light, three heavy, and one medium. The light passives and the heavy passives are going to counteract each other. So it's going to be the best min max for your entire character. This is the best way to go for this build, trust me. And then our jewelry is going to look like this. We're going to be in triple harmony with triple uh, magic recovery all with pariah jewelry on so harmony 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 all magic recovery and then our stat sheet is going to look like this we're going to have all 64 points into magic and then our food is going to be bewitch sugar skulls to get our magic health and stem as much as possible and this is where i really like the build this is where like this is where you can take it your own ways i go with the shadow mundus because i'm a khajiit on this build so we're going to just basically be playing all around that crit damage so say for instance we're a khajiit we're going to be looking at these for our passives we're going to be having that um we're going to be having that stamina and magic recovery health recovery doesn't really matter by 85 and then obviously the increased max health and stam on Khajiit but what's really important what we really like on this build what really makes it what it is is this passive right here our critical damage is going to be increased by 12 percent so when we proc our mechanical acuity which is a hundred percent critical uh uptime for uh five seconds you're going to be hitting like a truck and especially with the shadow mundus it is just the best of both worlds you don't need too much uh spell damage with this build when you have all of that it's honestly why i love this build so much buffed up our stats are going to look like this we're going to have 29.5k magic 31.5k health and 22.9k stam i think that stam is actually through the roof and if you wanted to switch foods and do something like uh pickled fish bowl you're i, I can see why you would do that i just really like being able to block for days and just keeping that stamp up as high as possible. Then let's rebuff. 
our magic recovery is going to look like 1631, which isn't bad if you just uh, proc those heavy lightning attacks in properly. Uh, you might have to sacrifice a, Q Q a few acuity uh, procs in there, but I think it's worth it just to be able to sustain and stay alive. And then on our front bar, our spell damage is going to be 2722, and that's without even entropy or our glyph up. So it could probably get around to 3800 with both of those up. So definitely make sure your buffs are up at all times. Then our spell resistance is going to be 31.6k, and our physical resistance is going to be 29.5k with 2742 critical resistance. All right, now onto our skills. On our front bar, our skills are going to look like this. We're going to have Avid Boneyard, which is going to be your main source of damage on this build. You can activate your own synergy on this, which deals 10.9k frost damage to any enemy in these. Uh, in the vicinity of it but having har triple harmony on is going to increase that damage so this is going to be what you're going to be hitting super hard with and all the other abilities on here are just going to be extra damage uh, degeneration is going to be your major sorcery buff so that's going to increase your spell damage by 20 percent Volcanic Rune is probably the most tricky part about this build. When you, What you do is you put it on the floor and then it'll activate after two seconds and any, any enemy that goes into that after the two seconds will fly up in the air and it will CC them. So the way to do this combo, I will explain after. Stalking Blast Bones, which is going to be a hard hitting ability on your uh, on your bar. You're gonna wanna try and line that up to right before you're about to burst. That way you get as much damage as humanly possible. Crushing Shock, this is gonna be your main spammable when you're not actually lining up your burst. This is gonna be able to keep pressure on your enemies without actually needing to hit your synergy or hit uh, you know, your Blast Bones or whatever. So having that Crushing Shock is gonna give you a little bit of pressure. And then Dawnbreaker is going to be, it's the best ultimate right now to combo with this. I, I didn't like the Smash anymore, the, uh, what, what it's the name, the Frozen Colossus. I don't like that anymore. They got, it got nerfed so hard that it just doesn't do enough damage. Dawnbreaker is just better in every way for this. Then on our back bar, we're going to have Race Against Time as our snare removal. So this is going to really just be able to let you kite around and run around as much as possible without really being held back. And then also that critical damage uh, increased by 10% is huge too. Spirit Guardian, you're going to get 10% mitigated damage from this, which is really nice. And you also get a mini heal on top of it too, which you can, it'll heal you and then also your allies. So definitely keep this on your bar at all times and keep it going. And then with the passive from, where is this? Right here. It will increase your magic and stamina recovery by 200 just by having it out so make sure it is out at all times to increase your recovery too mortal coil is an extended vigor basically it's gonna heal you for 15.7 or 15.8 k over 12 seconds which is a lot of healing so make sure this is out at all times if you can it goes on any corpse so just try and get that out so that you're just getting that heal up as much as possible so you're not taking too much damage Resistance Fle Resistant Flesh is going to be your main burst heal. Uh, so if you are taking too much damage, you're not going to want to spam Spirit Guardian or Immortal Coil. That's not going to save you. What's going to save you is hitting this a few times and just getting that heal up and just getting your health back up to full. It's the best way to not die, basically. And then Summoner's Armor. I prefer this one over the other morph of uh, armor because the other morph gives you, it gives your enemies free CC immunity and I don't like giving them that because that could really mess up your burst. And then on top of that, you're going to be getting reduced cost of uh, Blast Bones and uh, Spirit Mender by 15%. So it's just going to help your sustain as well. So this ability is going to also give you your physical and spell resistance buffs. So Major Resolve is a huge key on most builds. So Definitely keep this up at all times along with your Spirit Mender. And then your back bar ultimate is going to be Spell Wall. This is going to be your main defense if you're getting absolutely zerged down and you can't really get out of a situation and burst them out. So if you need to use this ability, don't worry about it. You can build a Dawnbreaker fast. It's only 125 ultimate. So if you absolutely need to, use this skill to get out of a situation. All right, and onto our CP. 
our blue tree is going to look like this. We're going to be having as our four main slottables Biting Aura, Duelist Rebuff, Fighting Finesse, and Resilience. Two of the most important things on this build, in my opinion, and as a CP, are Biting Finesse, which is going to increase your critical damage by 10%. So, you know, we've already gone over this being Khajiit and then using the Shadow Mundus, then having the buff from this as well it's gonna really make your crits hit so hard. So having that acuity proc is gonna just gonna make it even more deadly. So make sure you have fighting finesse on this. Then also I like biting aura as well. So this is gonna buff your blast bones, your grave robber, and your uh, dawnbreaker as well. So those two are very, 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 very important. I was debating on putting on oculent overload just to you know try and get more of a bomb build going on but i can't sacrifice any of these four slottables in my opinion so for now i'm just going with these four if it ever changes in the future i'll let you guys know our red slottables are going to be rejuvenation boundless vitality ironclad and peace of mind it's basically i i think i basically use all four of these on every single one of these builds it's without a doubt my four favorite on this tree. There is a lot of good ones, but these are just without a doubt my four favorite slottables. Then as always, make sure you just fill in these CPs accordingly. Uh, Hero's Vigor is really important. Uh, Mystic Tenacity is incredibly important, especially on this build since you don't have a purge. So a tumbling is very important as well. So just make sure you uh, apply accordingly to these CP trees. And then on the green tree, we already know what's most important, right guys? Breakfall is the most important thing in this entire tree. And then I also have Rationer, which is gonna increase your food for you know, 30 minutes. And then Liquid Efficiency, which is going to maybe save you a pot every now and then. But we already know the drill. Grifted Rider, uh, we're gonna use that because in, in case it's a new character, it's gonna increase your mount speed. And then War Mount, you know, it just improves your mastery with mounts, removing all mount stamina outside of combat, so why not get the places faster all right and for this build i'm also gonna recommend two add-ons if you can if you're on pc the first add-on is going to be aim synergy tracker which is going to be this thing right here i'll show you guys in a second exactly how it's spelled what it does is it tracks your synergy cooldown so say i hit grave rubber right here you can see a timer go down because you can only have activate the same synergy once every 20 seconds so having that is really going to be able to help you line your burst up properly and then the other one if you look at this right here, so aim synergy tracker is the first one, and the other one is EXOYS proc set timer. And what this does is it helps me line up my QED burst as well. So say I hit this guard right here, you can see it's got that timer on the acuity on the left. And then you can also see right here that my uh, timer is going down to when I'll be able to proc again. So it's at 10 seconds, and once this timer is up, you'll be able to proc your acuity again. So I like both of these add-ons to be able to help me line up my burst as much as possible. Now that the proc is done, my QD's back up and I can just crit whenever. All right guys, so this is how my burst is gonna look. Make sure you always keep up your spirit mender and your armor up, but you're gonna wanna hit your entropy first because this is not direct damage. Uh, it will not proc your acuity. So what you wanna do is make sure you get your uh, entropy out and then you hit your blast bones, hit your volcanic room, dawnbreaker, and then hit your synergy combo. And that is the exact combo in a nutshell. And that will do so much damage to players that they will just fall over in two seconds if they don't know what they're doing. So that is why I like this build right there. So guys, that's the build. I hope you guys enjoyed. And remember, again, if you guys can, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see this build live in action, you can catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash Jakar. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the build, and I will see you guys next time. Later.